<laughs> oh, um, I have an event on the 7th of September. Can I plug that in at the yeah, end? You just have because we're live. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Tell us about the event before we introduce you, Carmel. OK, well, I suppose it's a kind of a little bit like a follow on. And I've chosen this um, webinar to kind of launch it, if you like, because it's the start of a process. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm trying to get people ready for the return, doing their returns in October. So for okay. the people who haven't done anything, um, I'm going to take you through the process. And the event is on the 7th of September. Um, but today I'm going to talk about how you um, set up as a sole trader. There will okay. be a webinar at the end of this month, okay. um, 29th of May, to tell you how what you need to do to prepare for the um, day on the 7th of September. So the idea is that at the end of the, the workshop, it's a Saturday workshop, so hopefully everybody will be able to go. At the end of the workshop, you go away knowing what you need to do in order to get your uh, accounts in order to either hand over to somebody to do um, your return or as sole traders we can do our own um, as well so okay. you have enough information to do your own tax return so it's kind of a long process but it starts here today okay so gang we're live we went straight in there to Carmel <laughs> about her event people going what the hell is happening? <laughs> um, okay, that's brilliant, Carmel. And 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 what you might do is um, leave the link in the comments with all that information. So if people want to go to a, it's a live event, is it, Carmel? Yes, it's, yes. Cool. Um, but there are a few steps beforehand which will be online. Um, okay, it's just cool. to prepare for it. Okay, brilliant. So that's great. So if you're scratching your head, going, "What the hell is <laughs> here?" I'm watching on about who's this person and who am I? <laughs> you're watching the Biscuit Box, which is our live program stream thingy every Wednesday at 11 o'clock on the Biscuit page and it's a no bullshit channel it's real people sharing real knowledge about real things that are happening in the business world in the creative world in the world and um, so I'm happy that you're tuning in today and um, today is a an interesting topic it's something that we get asked over in our community page Bite the Biscuit all the time it's something creative people struggle with and um, i think a lot of people not just creative yeah. people struggle with this and um, and i know karma's nodding there going yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's and, and and it's the whole finance thing um i met karma a, a good few times now at different mm -hmm. networking events and, and something that i love about how Carmel is positioning her skill set is she wants to make finance easy hooray like brilliant that's what we want right because when you're not in that number zone and you're not really wired now I, I i i challenge that because i think everything can be learned and when you have a good teacher and you have someone to help you it's something that's important to learn if you're running a business i disagree that you're not wired to know about numbers it might be challenging but you're feckin' well able to learn gang mm -hmm. so learn and uh, engage with it and it's funny, I'm sure you find this, Carmel, that when people do sit down and, and engage with something like this and actually take the time and headspace to actually say, I am able to do this, people get aha moments, don't they? They go, oh, this isn't as hard as I thought. Okay, it's pretty boring, but it's not as hard as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to your world, of course, but you know yourself, like when, you know, numbers can be feckin' exciting because you can see mm -hmm. your growth potential you can see if i change this and this i can make more money and that's great that's exciting like isn't it carmel oh it's, br it's brilliant but you have said it really 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 well i'm actually going to take what you said and and repurpose that because i um i that's totally what i think um in fact a lot of people that i have worked with um, for whatever reason, they've been they either have been told back in the day when schools should have been shot for some of the things they told their, the children, um, or they just believe that they're not a numbers person. Um, as a numbers person, I ha I actually do art as well. So uh, you know, uh, and I would have been told that I'm not creative. So um, and I would believe everybody has some sort of paint uh, painting style in them. So 
you know, it's just these things, these stereotypes that we've been um, brought up with. Um, but the one sentence I think that really, really kills accountants is, you know, that death and taxes. And I just think that tax, uh, it just gets associated with death. and I owe money and somebody's going to kill me if I get this wrong. And all of that kind of grows um, out of proportion. And the reality of it is um, for 95% for of the population, the revenue is not somebody to be fearful of. They're, they're, they're uh, somebody that wants to help you. They want to get you online and get your taxes sorted out and help you do that because that makes their life easier. Okay. Um, so that is one thing. If you feel that you're, fi you're, if you're finding it stressful, leave it for that day and go back the next day. It will be amazing how much your subconscious goes takes in and when you get to that point and you think I really hate this uh, and move away but I am going to go through just a, a couple of, of um, steps yeah. I have posted on my um, page um, a link to an article that in my on my on my blog kind of that I will be talking about some of the um, some links to revenue and things and all those links are on that article so if oh, you're if you're following this and you want to do things um contact me dm me and i'll show you where it is or uh, go to my um, facebook the page. Hi there carmel that would be awesome if you could leave the link for that page in the comments it would be yes. cool for everybody to dive into that and because i know your website there's great resources and you blog a lot about all this kind of stuff so it's a great resource i'm just going to put up carmel's um website there as well so Perfect. That's carmel's website so you can go over and have a look at that and um, it's a great resource um so today tell us what you're going to teach us today carmel and, 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 and we're going to share some slides that I can't figure out how to get rid of the side thing on it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, okay, I'm not I'm not technical. I'm a numbers person, you know. Yeah, well, me neither. So and, and I run online business and I'm not technical. Hello, just shows you 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 know you you, you learn as you go. <laughs> and you exactly. just make right. Okay, so we, we so tell us first before I go away and let you take mm -hmm. over, tell us what you're going to teach us today and who should be listening to this. So um, as I, you, if some people came on um, at the beginning, I was kind of a mid launch on this. So basically I'm starting today um, sorting you out from the very, very start. Um, if, I'm going to show you how, talk to you about how you get a PPS number if you don't already have one, right through to what, um, how to get set up. And then um, there, I am running an event on the 7th of September, um, which kind of finishes off this kind of training. There will be a webinar um, on the 29th of, of May uh, to kind of tell you how to get your accounts in order because they are actually really, really important. And I understand that they are a little bit boring. I even find them a little bit boring. Um, but the thing that motivates me the most is finding out the end result and yes. what that means. Yes. And also, if we get a little bit organized, um, which is part of what this training day is about, um, it becomes um, a series of little jobs every week rather than this big mountain of that nobody likes, um, yes. regardless of, of what kind of brain you have, left or right or whatever. Nobody yes. wants that. Yeah, um, brilliant. Yeah. So, so this is the first like foundation step for exactly. that lovely process that you're going to have after this after you engage with Carmel's webinar and perhaps maybe go to her workshop at the end of it you'll go right now I know what to do every week exactly. I do this little chunk so at the end of the year when this whole tax crap comes if there's no crap involved it's all <laughs> done everything's set up it's much easier to hand over to a an accountant or whoever to 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 submit or do it yourself so you're going you to can do it yourself as well okay so i'm going to go away and let you and, and i'm going to add the 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 the, um, the slides there to the um to the thingy and i'll go away i assume you said now there i'm back okay so let me um, talk to you first about setting up as a sole trader. So the very, very first step um, on where to start is you need your PPS number. 
Now, um, if you were born in Ireland uh, and during or after 1979, you will have been given a PPA S number when you were born. One was automatically given to you. Um, if you don't know what that is, um, it will be the number that you probably got um, children's allowance on or have you had any interaction with the, um, the state, it will, you will, your PPS number is on that. If you were born, like me, before 1979, um, you will have to apply. So they will give you one. Um, and there are details there in um, the department. There, the link is there in, in this article that I am going to post. It's the Department of Employment Affairs and Social Protection. Um, where you need to apply. You will also need to apply for a PPS number if you were not born in Ireland. Um, so you need to, um, if you're born outside Ireland, you also need to apply. You will need um, a um, passport and um, proof of, of address um, for that. Now, um, so where you need to register. So once you've been given your PPS number, you need to register for income tax. So individual sole traders pay income tax um, and you need to do that online. So the e-registration service on the revenue.ie, again, that link is there. If you are, I do know people who are totally um, technophobes. They do not want to go online. Um, they uh, Revenue, if you um, make an arrangement with revenue, so if you ring up and speak to somebody in revenue, they will accept a manual form, which is a T or one. However, that's in exceptional um, circumstances. You would really need to do it online. And to be honest, it would be worth investing the time online because it will save you time further on down the line um, because everything, they want to get everyone on, on, online. So once you have your PPS number, you need to go on to the e-registration service on revenue.ie. Most of the questions they are asking will be what... Um, uh, you know, uh, just where you are, who you are, and, and things like that. They would just set up um, questions like that. Then um, step three is getting set up. Um, so you will be given, you, you, you need to open, it's called a My Account on Revenue. And this is the first step that you need to do, have. So My Account. And through My Account, you access all of the services that Revenue um, provide. So they will, um, there is there if you need to check your credits. Now I'll just talk about what credits are. In Ireland, um, you are allowed to earn a certain amount of money tax free. Uh, and that's for everybody. Uh, but depending on your circumstances, it will depend on what, how much that credit is. I think for a, um, a self employed person, it's about 1,600. Um, that's after tax. So it's not a huge amount, but I think it works out at about gross 15,000 or somewhere like that. But you can earn that sales and um, profit. You can earn um, about that much and get it tax free. The next bracket is 20%. So you can earn up to 34,000 at 20%. So it's very important that you um, make sure that you your credits are, are there and that you know um, you have claimed everything that you need to claim. So different things can happen. If you are the sole earner in your family um, and your partner maybe isn't working or, or uh, you, you can claim, get some of their credit. So it's important that you engage with revenue to make sure that you're getting all the, the allowances that you are allowed. Um, so now step four, um, Okay, so you do kind of have to make a decision then on step four. If my slides would work, I could tell you what, what that was. Um, okay, so once you're set up on revenue, you have to make the decision of whether you're self-employed or you are working for somebody else. Now, if you're working for somebody else, you need to give them, give your employer number, um, put the employer number on my account. Um, so that's for you, and your employer will provide you with the number that you need. If um, you are self-employed, which I think probably most of you are, you will need to set up as a self-employed person, 
And this is where you, you kind of go away from the normal um, or the normal um, type of person. I, my slides that okay, so this is where you where it gets can get a little bit complicated because not everybody has to do this. So you need to then go and make an official record. So you need to register with the um, CRO, the company's registration office. Again, that link will be in the, um, the comment section here. So it's the company registration office. You need to, um, so if you're using your own name, you just need to register that name as uh, self-employed. Um, or if you, you can also use a company name. If there is no other company at that um, level um, using that name, you can use that name. And the CRO will give you a, um, a number. And you will need that number for certain other things that you're using. So um, you will be doing. So there will be a small fee. From memory, I think it's about 20 euros. It's not a huge amount. And it takes roughly um, two weeks to come back. Um, so next, we have going online. So now step for going online. So this is now an, another step online. So you have my account, you have your CRO uh, number, and you've got to go online. So now you go on Ross. So this is the revenue online service. Only people that go on Ross are self-employed and companies. So your friends may not know anything about Ross, that's fine. They're, they're probably not working for themselves. Um, and you need to, so it's a, it's a form T or two, um, but it's an online form again. So once you're on online revenue, won't take you off. So you will always do everything online. Um, and you can get that via uh, your my account. So at the bottom, I don't have any screenshots, but at the bottom of your my account, there will be um, a section um, to register as a self-employed. And they do try and make it very easy for you. Now, if like me, I had registered a company years ago, um, a partnership years ago, and I couldn't, and that was dissolved and everything. And on my account, I couldn't find Part. They kept on saying it's on my account and I could not see it. And I had to ring up and find out. Turns out it wasn't actually on my page because of the previous registration. So sometimes they will do things like that. They might um, want you to contact them because they want to know what, 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 what you're kind of doing. So uh, that's just um, for your information. I think Tara is coming on. Yeah. Um, hi. I just wanted to pipe in there just for a few seconds because I wanted to ask you something. Um, this is great, by the way, Carmel. I'm like scribbling away. <laughs> it's great to have the step by step. I wanted to ask you about the company registration thingy because just you said there that you had dissolved a company before. Oh, well, it was a partnership, but never. Oh, actually okay. Tried. No, no. I, do, I was just wondering. Um, you know, if you had a company like um like for years and years and you didn't, you, you know, you, and, and it, you didn't, um, you didn't use it for years and then you started a new business and you just put it into the old company. Is it, can you set up a new company quite easily from that? Like, or do you have to stay with your old company? What would you? Um, it depends now, um, just when you're talking about companies, company is a limited company. Yeah. Right, so there, that's a little bit different, and okay. I, um, it's just a little bit more complicated. Okay. Uh, sole trader, the, see, the sole trader, um, you can be in employment and be a sole trader. Um, it's all about my taxes, what I pay, and it's all to do with tax credits. Okay. As a company, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that because as a limited company, uh, you, you're protected. You have that limited liability. So there's a lot more steps that need to go into that. Okay. Uh, it can be quite difficult to, dis well, there is a whole process to dissolve a company. Um, so you would have to have um, an accountant write it off that you, there was no trading, that there was no, um, there's no income coming through that. Um, so you would need to dissolve it. Okay. Um, to reinstate it uh, would probably be easier if it's already there. Um, you would just need to get in touch with revenue and make sure that uh, they, they knew. So is this company just as a matter of interest? Have you been doing returns every year for, for this? Oh, 
yeah. as a turn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, then it's still in the in the but but you've probably been saying nil return, nil return. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's probably easier to to bring that back to life than than to close just, it down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's quite specific. And, and and just just and I'll go away now again. Yeah. <laughs> just to just to note that um if if you're stuck on stuff like can you just ring revenue and say hi yeah i can you help me with this like are they open for conversations around that kind of stuff carmel or would you be waiting for a million years like to get to talk to someone no i mean you will um they're very helpful they are very very helpful i mean accountants will treat the revenue a little bit like the police you know they will only tell them what they what they need to know um but to be fair um as I said earlier on, most people here, most people in the group, most people in Ireland are, are just trying to do it right. They just want to get online, do it right and, and not end up owing money that they didn't know they owed at the yeah. end of the year or something. And they just want to be able to manage it. And with that in mind, they're they're a lot more approachable than they would have been years ago. And um, years ago, sometimes if you didn't like the answer revenue gave you, you would just ring again and get somebody else to give you another answer. But yeah. all that's gone. Oh, you know, yeah. It's all stream, streamlined and they want you online and they will help you. And and even if you do owe tax um, and you've been burying your head in the sand, um, you know, don't. Ring them up. They will organise a payment plan with you. They just... Um, no, they just want to get that off their kind of desk. They're all human as well. Uh, they want to move on. And even if you're paying five or a, a week or whatever you can afford. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a lot of peace of mind with that, Carmel. That huge no, peace that, of mind. You know, there's a fear factor around owing money as well. It's yeah. awful. Like, you know, you're just crying, right? Going, oh, I can't. So, but people want to help you with that. Yes. So, the worst thing you can do is ignore it because it'll get big. The worst thing and you can do um, for yourself is to ignore it. Yeah, exactly. You're dead right. Okay, I'm going to go away again now. Okay. <laughs> Hang on, I'll put your <laughs> back in and get rid of me. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we're going to just talk a little bit about taxes, um, which is probably your favourite thing to talk about. Um, okay, so this is kind of i just wanted to bring a couple of things up here because i hear what goes on in the chat rooms as well as everybody else um so a self-employed person so for example say i started a business first of january 2018 the first return that i actually have to make is um this october now i keep on saying october it is the 31st of october but that is extended to the 17th of november if you do it online so october has kind of gotten dropped and now it's november but i always think just keep october in your mind and two extra weeks are a bonus two weeks if you need them so if i start a business the first of january 2018 i actually am due to pay preliminary taxes on the 31st of october 2018 okay so However, the rule is you, you pay 90% of the taxes that you, that you owed last, the year, previous year, which will, for me in this example will be 2017, or you pay, sorry, you pay 90% of the taxes that you're due in 2018, or you pay 100% of the taxes that are due in 2017. Because I started a business on the first of January 2018, I will opt to pay 100% of the taxes that were due in 2017. So therefore, that is zero. So I think if you go on to the next um, slide, uh, Tara, um, so I would, uh, that's zero. So so if you started a business in 2017, right, okay, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to confuse people with dates because I know you're listening to me as well. So if you started a business in 2019, you need, you need to pay preliminary tax in October 2019. Um, and that is uh, the 90% of what you think you're going to owe in 2019, which can be hard to understand, or 
of taxes due that were due in 2018. Because my business only started this year, 100% of last year is zero. So I pay zero tax in October 2019. Now, the important thing to remember, I want to just move on there, um, Tara, is the important thing to remember is when, um, I'm sorry, I'm after running on the next one as well, please. Um, if you make a profit in 2019, come October 2020, I need to, to pay my taxes for 2019, and I also need to spend and um, to pay preliminary tax for 2020. So the first year of business, I don't pay any tax, but the second year of business, I pay two um, amounts of tax. Now, in the third year of business, I pay the tax from previous years, but because I pay two, the preliminary tax and I pay what I'm due, normally that cancels out. So I know a lot of people haven't been paying. I hope this has probably been recorded, um, but I know pe some people don't pay preliminary taxes um, and that is okay. Um, but the rule is that you really should be paying preliminary taxes and the taxes that you're due. Now, I realize that that's a lot of information, a yeah. lot of numbers going in there. So no, I will provide a bit more information on that. Hey, hey, Carmel, I just want to I just want to clarify that because I'm I'm just a bit confused and I'm sure yes, I'm right. sorry. I probably didn't say that. Um, right. No, 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 you did. No, 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 this is brilliant. And actually, it's it, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So. So I open a business and even though I haven't traded as of yet, I still have to make the return of zero. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's telling them that I don't have anything to return, but I'm registered and I'm in their books. Yes. So yes. then the next year I'm paying preliminary tax, but that's the zero, right? That was the zero mm -hmm. return, right? That you put in. No, sorry. So let's say we, we start a business. We've just started a business now in 2019. Yeah. We should pay preliminary taxes for 2019 in October, in six months' time, five months' time, yeah. or 2019. Okay. Right? But you will have a choice. Um, you can pay what you think you're going to pay, what, what profit. Say you, you know your business is in profit and you think you're going to have to pay taxes. Yeah. in 2019 you can pay 90 percent of what you think you're going to have to pay which can be hard yeah. uh, to work that out yeah. and remember if you get it wrong they will charge you interest on the bit that you got wrong so just be careful of that one so everybody always chooses to pay a hundred percent of last year okay okay so because instead they know what that figure is yeah right but the first year you're trading, 100% of last year, because you weren't trading, there was nothing there. 100% of nothing is nothing. Okay. So, that so is that's your why part. you get this free year, but it's not really a free year, but it is, this is how you get, oh, you hear people saying this all the time. Um, oh, but the first year in business, you don't pay any taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's true, but the thinking the, the way people are thinking about it is kind of wrong because what happens is the second year of business, you will have two sets of, of taxes to pay. You will have to pay 100% of last year. Which yeah. If you're in profit, that could be whatever that is. So you've got to pay 100% on, you've got to pay your taxes on the previous year, yeah. but you've also got to pay taxes on 2020. Okay, and the so you're going to probably use the same rule. You're going to say, "Well, I'll I'll pay a hundred percent of last year," so that means you're paying a hundred percent of for preliminary tax yeah. and a hundred percent the tax that you owe. Okay, so you're you're doubling it. Okay, now the third year, you come and you say, okay, I made a profit again in my second year, so I have to pay those taxes. Yeah. But you offset, and that just means you, you're, you're plus the taxes that you owe, 
but you minus your preliminary taxes that you already paid last year. So okay. the idea of that is that you probably only have a really small bit to pay. Okay. And then you only you have to pay your preliminary taxes for 2021. Okay. So then yes. So then you're really should be in and around a hundred percent. So, 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 it's kind of, so, so it's kind of like this, right? It's kind of like putting a deposit down on something that you're paying. I, I'm, my preliminary tax is this. The next payment is this. I and I minus one from yes. the other because I've paid nearly a deposit for the for the yes. rest. Okay, preliminary ta tax is a deposit. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool. That's clarified in my brain now. That's fine. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> So that is a bit tricky. And also where um, there is a lot, there are a lot of people um, talking about different things um, to do with taxes um, because there isn't this free year as such, although it is kind of free. And also remember, um, if you are making a loss and you have no other income. Um, okay, so um, if you make a loss, there's two things that can happen. If it is your only income, so your sole trader, self-employed, is the only income that you have and you make a loss, you can carry that forward for, um, to, to offset against any profit. So any, um, so if you made a loss of, once they worked it out, you made a loss of 1,000 in 2020 and you made a profit of 2,000 in 2021, they will say, well, you've a, minus 1000 plus 2000 so they will offset them again and they will charge you profit on only 1000 um now the only thing to just be careful of there is if you are in paye worker um, and you have paid tax they will actually give you the money back they will pay that back um if you have already paid taxes the reason they don't give it back to self-employed people is because you haven't paid taxes so they can't give it back to you if you haven't paid but as a PAY worker, so if you're working to, um, for yourself and as a part-timer with somebody else and you have paid tax and you have made a loss in your business, they will give you back the tax that you paid. Um, okay, so we move on now to, um, I think that is, uh, I've, my slides have gone crazy. So now keeping records and this is something that i'm i am quite um passionate about the revenue do not say that you've got to use a fancy um application they do not say it has to be you can go in with pen and paper a list of all your expenses and a list of all your invoices as long as you can find those invoices as long as you can find those um, receipts as long as you are keeping good records as long as you are keeping um, proper information um, and you understand exactly what, how the money is coming into your business and how the money is going out of your business. And that you have come to this uh, number as, as um, your profit number and, this is, and you have the backup to show and you have the files to show. You don't need to have it online. You don't need to have it on any fancy um, software. Um, only thing I would say it has to be easy for you and this is somewhere where I am um, I, I'm quite passionate about and it is something that people tend to uh, think that they're good at it that they're not good at it some of it is a lot of it actually most of it at the beginning is getting organized is getting organized in some form so that you can keep your receipts in one place so that when you do sit down at the end of the week or the end of the month and I wouldn't suggest you do it any less you have them all there in one spot and you can organize them in date and you can write them into a book you can type them into a spreadsheet or you can put them into um, a an app some of the apps you can photograph the uh, receipt and it uploads into um, some of the computer um, apps and they're all acceptable except you just need to check one of the issues that I get all the time when I work with um, people at the setup stage is it, uh, the information is coming in in a lot of different places and a lot of different reports, and there's not a check going through how um, 
how things are working. Um, so keeping records is um, a huge um, area for accounts, and that is part of, of your responsibility as a, um, a sole trader, is to make sure that you can do, um, that you keep good records. So what can you do? So my, I have my, anyone has heard me speaking before, these, you'll have heard these tips because I want you, you to hear my voice when you're not doing things uh, or, or what, what needs to be done. So the top three tips that I have, if you want to move on there, Tara, is um, we can probably skip the next one. Um, yeah, so collecting the information, I've already mentioned that, and I, it can be on the back of an envelope. It really doesn't matter as long as you can track Track them and understand them and keep keep the back up. Uh, you do have to keep records up to six years. So just make sure you have some form of system that keeps that going. Um, and start today. So start today going forward. If you have a backlog, you can always start. So set up your new system and start today. And then that starts looking after itself every day. And then every week, just spend an hour trying to get to the backlog get the backlog, um, keep going and keep going until you get back to the start of the year. If you start at the beginning of the year and try and catch up this way, you're you're always running, you're always chasing your tail and it doesn't feel as um as um empowering. So start today on your new system. So the number two then is cash is king and this all accountants doesn't matter what type of accountant they are, they will tell you cash is king and know where you what's coming into your business and what is not. Um, there is a lot of people um, using Stripe, using PayPal. So they can see the money, the invoice is going out, they can see money coming in, but they don't check both of them. You should have a separate bank account. That bank account can be in your own name. It doesn't have to be a business bank account, but you need to keep it separate from your personal account because it just makes it easier for you to try um, you need to know if you've received every, every payment. So you might send out five, two, five, ten invoices in a month. You need to know that you've got all of those monies in. Keeping it up here works for a little while, but you've got so much going on. You need to have a system that tracks that. And then my third one is forecasting. And this is a huge one, but uh, this is the it's third for a reason, because you need to do the other two in order to do this um, forecast. And this is plan ahead. Plan ahead uh, at least three months, six months ahead, so that you know what money you need coming in and how you're going to pay your bills going out. Um, while I am working with people now getting their taxes in for 2018, um, they, realistically, they should be done in January. Um, and you should have said goodbye to 2018 then, and then concentrating on 2019. So now, just talk about there, how important are, are your numbers? Um, okay, I think we on to the next slide. So it really, really is so important. Um, it shows you where you've been. So it shows, how, it shows you where you've started and where you are now. And that's really, really important because sometimes I mean, you can have up days and down days, and sometimes you think, oh, why am I doing this? And you need to have those numbers to show, well, you know what, I, I, I uh, sold X amount of, of stock or paintings or product or workshops. And it's just really good to know um, how far you've come. And the numbers will show you that. But understanding where, how you, where you've been and where you are will show you where you're going. So if you're keep doing the same thing, you will get keep getting the same results. So once you want to uh, grow your business, come out of um, from being a, a hobbyist or a part timer, and you want this, this, um, this job to sustain you and to to make a living from it, you need to know what that number is, you need to know what the, your number for your living expenses are. And you need to know what your how much money you, you would like to earn. And then you start moving towards it. If we don't know what our goals are, we don't know where, what we're working towards. 
Now, um, moving on, I think I'm done. That's my um, email address and uh, website. So hopefully I haven't Great. Uh, spoken too much. No, I, have, I know I have. Great, <laughs> like step by step um, overview of, you know, those key things that you should yeah looking at and um it's something that we don't really talk about too much because there's so much to it and i think the key thing with um learning anything like this is do it in really small chunks like this yes. kind of mini workshopy thing where you know it gives you step by step you know not to be afraid of it to use revenue as well as a resource and pick up the phone yes. and i need help and I think we tend to ignore this part of what we do because again, it just feels like a big monster of a yoke. Um, and, and it's great that you are an amazing resource, like you blog, you help yeah. people with this process. And I think it's it's a good process to kind of nail um, if you're really serious about your business because guess yeah. what? business is all about numbers it's all about mm -hmm. hitting your numbers and we tend to focus on social media numbers you know yes. how many followers do i have how many likes am i getting on the it's kind of the same thing only it, it's money numbers and it's it's, it's it's um it's just as important as your social media number you know and that's funny we used to say that because a lot of people say to me um, oh, I'm not good with numbers, yet they can tell you how many people looked up their blog. Or yes. I can't even work all that out. And yes. I'm just trying to learn it. This is a skill I don't know. And no one, uh, you know, so it's very, very new to me. Um, but the, the key to starting a new process, particularly when it comes to accounting, is start today going forward. Yeah. Let the backlog sort itself out, because once you know what you're doing today going forward, first of all, it's less daunting. And secondly, once you get your process, what you like doing and don't like doing up yeah. and running, it'll be much easier for you to go back and then yeah. start at January and forward um, and then keep today ticking over and ticking over and eventually that backlog will will With grow you know a lot of people come back to me and they say oh i did what you told me and i started in january and i spent five hours and i only got to april you know and this is like in 2018 and you're kind of going oh and and they've exhausted the energy that they had for it yeah uh, you know um so it's just a better idea yeah and and, and i think as well i think you know take it step by step and 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 here is something that i think is is really important and 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 something that we again ignore a bit is knowing but how much does it cost you to actually trade like mm -hmm. your you know your subscription to the biscuit factory you know that, or your um your um you know if you have a website how much do you pay every month out to that do you have that list in a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper or on a notebooks i know a lot of people are pen and paper do you know all those little payments that you're paying out every month or once a year how much do you actually need to take in to cover all those do you know mm. that number? and that's something that is really important because when you have that number and you're selling a product you'll know well if i'm paying out 300 quid a month and i sell a product for a hundred euro i need to sell three a month mm -hmm. i need to sell three a month that's my goal at least like you know exactly exactly it's, very just, well that, said. it's just that small little bit of add mini and once you have that number it's much easier to try and push yourself to hit a target because you know what your target is as you said caramel what if you're faffing around just selling stuff and you don't know why you're selling it or how much you need to sell it's a lot harder isn't it it's, it's an awful lot harder uh, you know, what to focus on grows so um my focus is on profit so revenue is is brilliant and it's great and obviously you need revenue uh, but if you're not controlling your costs you will have no money left yeah and when you have no money left that's how we get paid we get paid out of the profit yeah you don't get paid out yeah. of the revenue that's an interesting point as well just before we go because i know i know that we're, everyone's getting a bit tired but <laughs> um, that's an interesting point actually because we talk about this in the factory quite a bit of actually putting your 
um, salary as an expense rather than just out of profit. Because yeah. if you grow your business and you have to pay somebody to come in to help you, that's an expense. Like, and and you yeah. should be part of that. Uh, when you're structuring your business, just like you pay for your website domain stuff or whatever your Squarespace or whatever, it's nearly, you know, the minimum amount that you can uh, pay yourself, yes. even if it's a 10 or a week, it's yeah. thing that you're going, yeah. you know, and have it in there. I think that's really important. Yeah, no, a very interesting book. I don't know if you, I, I haven't got it with me. Normally when I do these at home, I have the book that I can show you. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Profit First. Um, yeah. you, you have heard that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, I can't think of his surname, but, but you know, and, and um, as an accountant, I find a lot of flaws in the book, obviously. But yeah. uh, the one thing that I, I love, I love is the language that he uses around um uh, the money but also paying yourself first is first. really really important yeah you I'm know um in there now to the yeah. to that i just put that there profits it's the profitfirstbook.com that's the website so you can yes mike m oh, i can't pronounce it mike My, mike miller watches uh, uh, yeah I'm really but it is quite good um um, and, and I will put the links in as well. My battery is about, I think, to go. So I might be in mid-sentence and it might go. I'll come in um, after, Carmel, when you're ready and put the links to your webinar because that's going to follow all this information that you've given us today. You're going to do a webinar to follow up on that. like just to It's part of the training day on the 7th. So okay. um, there's tickets gone on sale today. So I'll put those up. Yeah. And uh, there's a webinar and then there'll be a face group um uh group to ask questions to prepare yourself for this day because i really want people coming away from that day knowing what they're doing and understanding uh their you know exactly what the next steps are there is a workbook I, everyone's going to get a workbook with the templates in it so that people can write it down if they don't want to do uh, the downloads if people want to do the downloads they can have the downloads as well uh, so it's for everybody that um, it, you know, it, it's for people who just believed if they were shown A, B, C, they could do this themselves, yeah. you know, and I want to show you the A, B, C. Yeah. Brilliant, Carmel. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on this morning to the Biscuit Box and sharing all that great stuff. Thank you so much. And um, I hope I I was a good uh, sidekick with my slides. I was trying to keep up with you going, ah! <laughs> I'm not used to doing the slidey bit, but well done, Carmel. That was really, really brilliant. And um, and we look forward to hearing from you again. And I and I hope that you'll get a great turnout with your workshop. I'm sure it'll be fantastic. And and please leave the link for, for those tickets and everything in, in the comments below. Thank you so much, Carmel. That was really, really great. Okay, gang, um, that was Carmel Siri. Um, I hope that helped you guys. A big takeaway from that for me, call revenue, ask them questions. Don't be afraid of them. These guys want, actually want to help you. And don't ignore the numbers. I know it's a pain and I know that you're maybe a little bit nervous of going into your numbers, but don't ignore them because it, it, it makes what you do a business. Okay, gang, um, that's it from the Biscuit Box this week. I'll see you next week at 11 o'clock every Wednesday, the Biscuit Box. Talk to you then. Keep creative. Have a good week. Bye.